Hello everyone, I will be discussing a technique called slicewise z shimming which was implemented in Shimming Toolbox, an open source software platform to perform v0 and v1 shimming experiments. I have nothing to declare. Spinal cord fMRI is challenging for many reasons, including its small size and its proximity to moving organs. It also suffers from poor v0 shimming due to field inhomogeneities caused by its proximity to the lungs as well as smaller scale variations due to connective tissue and vertebrae interfaces. Solutions exist that are based on field maps and aim at homogenizing that field, but a complementary approach to that is based on maximizing the signal intensity in a region of interest. One of these methods consists in applying different z shim gradients to different EPI volumes and selecting the gradient that results in the highest signal intensity in the region of interest for each slice. This approach was automated in a recent paper by Merv Kapton from Leipzig in Germany. Here, we implement the automated EPI intensity-based Z-shimming technique in Shimming Toolbox. But what is Shimming Toolbox? It is a software program that combines multiple tools to perform B0 and B1 shimming. It can be installed on a computer that can be brought to the scanner room and compute shimming coefficients from a graphical user interface or from the command line using scripts to more easily reproduce experiments. It includes tools to convert DICOM files to standardized bits data sets by leveraging DICOM to NIIX and DICOM to bits. It can create mass using BET and SCT and can compute shimming coefficients. These tools allow to perform static, dynamic, and real-time shimming using field map-based methods. Custom coils as well as scanner gradient and shim coils can be used to compute the shim coefficients, allowing to shim using the scanner hardware as well as custom hardware. Using the existing tools and APIs, it allowed for easy integration of the intensity-based z-shimming technique within the shimming toolbox ecosystem. More precisely, we used a custom EPI sequence developed by Jürgen Finsterbusch's group in Hamburg to acquire a scan consisting of 21 different volumes, each acquired with different Z shim gradients ranging from minus 21 millitesla per meter to 21 millitesla per meter. We chose Z gradients as they are expected to provide the most benefit. We can see on the top row of images that the mean of those 21 EPI volumes was computed to help the segmentation of the spinal cord. This step was performed by the spinal cord toolbox automatically. This segmentation will be the region of interest used for shimming. On the bottom row, the shimming calculation can take place. The Z-shimming procedure consists in figuring out the Z-shim gradient that maximizes the signal intensity in the spinal cord for each slice. To do so, a signal intensity matrix is calculated that includes the information about each slice and each EPI volume. The maximum signal intensity of each slice in that matrix is used as the Z-shim gradient for that slice. A text file is generated with the appropriate information and can then be used by a custom EPI sequence that will perform slicewise Z-shimming. The processing of those coefficients was implemented in Shimming Toolbox and used to generate a text file that was used to perform dynamic Z-shimming. Overall, the processing took 15 seconds. This includes DICOM to Nifty conversion, spinal cord extraction, and shimming calculations, which itself was around one second. This allows to waste no time while shimming at the scanner. To test our results, we acquired two sets of EPI images, one which was shimmed using the scanner's second-order global shim, and one using the dynamic Z-shimming procedure calculated by Shimming Toolbox. The acquisitions were performed on a Prisma 3D scanner. We acquired 100 volumes of 24 slices with 5 mm for each slice. The scan information is shown on the left. The figure shows a sagittal view of the mean of the 100 EPI volumes and the graph shows the signal intensity of both acquisitions. We observed an 11% increase in signal intensity across all voxels in the region of interest. We also observed an increase of 80% in signal intensity in lower slices a benefit of the slice-wise shimming that changes the shim coefficients for each slice. We also compared the temporal SNR. We can see sagittal images in the figure. The left one is a T2-weighted anatomical scan for reference. The middle and right images are the APIs of the global shimmed and slice-wise Z-shimmed, respectively. The TSNR was computed and is overlaid in the spinal cord, and an axial cut was shown where we can observe a TSNR increase. Across all slices and volumes, we measured a 21% increase in TSNR. To conclude, slice-wise Z-shimming improved signal intensity and TSNR in the spinal cord. 
The technique was implemented in shimming toolbox where many shimming algorithms coexist. A drawback of the intensity-based z-shimming technique is that it requires custom sequences. Future improvement could include x and y gradients as well as using custom shim coils. This technique could also be applied in real time to correct for respiration-induced field variations. I'd like to thank my collaborators as well as the shimming toolbox contributors who made this possible.